So a little bit of pressure applied helps drive, helps drive the screw in. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on today's episode of the Build Show Network. I'm Wade Paquin, custom home builder based out of Newport, Rhode Island. On today's episode, I want to show you how we build a shingle flare out. And to do that, I've got Fred and Dave, part of our crew that's going to walk you through that. Now guys, before we get into this, an important thing to note here is the liquid flashing. So before we conceal this, we're using Zip's liquid flash to cover the bottom edge of our sheathing for a nice air and water uh, seal here. The house and the project has stone veneer around the perimeter. So once the stone is set by the mason, we can then construct the flare out. So Fred, what's the first step of that? Well, what we do is I get this prefab here. All these blocks, I call them little rafter tails. I got the shape to it, the flare that we want around so the house. So is this cut from a template? Yes, we make like a pattern and they mark every single one, cut them all by hand. And uh, what we do is we fasten it to this PT block, which we fasten to the wall after. What we got here is with the bottom part that's gonna cap the stone. We use Versatec here. So that's concealed. Um, so we wanna put something that uh, is gonna last a long time right. and not yeah, rot. Yeah, you're really not gonna see that. It's just a protective. And the next step is, Dave, why don't you give me a hand here? Yeah is we got a control line here all the way around the house for our flare, so all our crosses match. We set it on our control line. Dave will fasten it for us. We get this one here, David. Yep. Then our next step is, I got the sheet already pre-cut here. We throw half inch plywood, which has got a little flex to it. We could push it into shape. We use uh, exterior screws just so it could grab the plywood, bring it into the shape of the block. Now I've noticed too, Fred, that you've got the plywood flush with your uh, cut on the trim, so the shingles can come right over Correct. the edge of that PVC in a, soffit material, if you will, um, for a nice overhang. Correct, that is correct. Our next step is we've got uh, grease, ice and water. We're just gonna tack it up to show what the process is. We like to come down to cover the seam here that seals it, go ahead Dave. Usually we'll peel it off and seal it, but, and what we do is we just flare it up the cheek wall like this, that's it. Our next step, we get the rain slicker. So the reason we're using rain slicker here on the project is to prolong the life of our shingles. So the rain slicker acts as a drainage plane and an air gap to keep any moisture behind the shingles um, from saturating the, the individual shakes. So once your rain slicker's up, you're basically ready to start your shingle coursing. Correct. Which would be your starter course, which is two rows of shingles. Correct. And we have that started over here on this uh, flare and um, return corner. So the bottom row has two courses of shingles here. These tabs hanging down just allow us to, to hang our ledger board. So you'll notice this might be a different system than most people are used to, but we do this because instead of face attaching the ledger to the shingle, you'll end up with nail holes across every row of shingles around the whole house. And to me, that can sometimes be very noticeable and it's just a little pet peeve of mine. So we like to hang the ledger board um, and the system we use to do that, well, we obviously don't want to cover the, the hang hanger with the shingle. So that gets all laid out 